Can we turn to God's word this morning? Father, we pray that this morning's word will bless each and every one of our spirits. Will be will be life to our souls, will be will will be will be strength to our bones this morning. Let it bring glory to your honorable and most worthy name. In Jesus name we pray. Let's turn to the book of Ruth chapter 2 and verse 1 to 12. The book of Ruth, chapter 2 and verse 1 to 12. For those of you who don't know, uh, we have our sermons now telecasted on YouTube and also now on iTunes. You know, every week uh, the podcast goes up on iTunes and we have our subscribers from different places who have been subscribing and they've been sending us emails stating that, uh, you know, that we've been blessed, that we've been inspired by the sermon so so please be in prayer because it's not just the few of us in this place who are going to receive from god but those who are watching online those who are hearing us hearing the audio online every one of us they're going to receive from god this morning amen, amen. so uh, let's let's study god's word we are in the book of ruth this morning ruth chapter 2 and verse 1 to 12 Can I read it from my Bible? Now, there was a wealthy and influential man in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day, Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, Let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, All right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters and as it happened, she found herself working in a field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law Elimelech. While she was there, Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvesters. The Lord be with you, he said. The Lord bless you, the harvesters replied. When Boaz asked his foreman, what is that young man Who is that young man over there? Who does she belong to? And the foreman replied, She is the young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi. She asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters. She has been been hard at work ever since, except for a few minutes, rest in her shelter. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay right here with us. When you gather grain, don't go to any other fields. Stay right behind the young woman working in my field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. When you are thirsty, help yourself to the water they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? She asked. I am only a foreigner. Yes, I know, Boaz replied, but I also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. I have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers. May the Lord, the God of of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. And everybody said an Amen. So this morning we are going to study the, the life of Ruth. In, how many of you know the story of Ruth? You know, how many of you know these movies, these stories that are made of this, uh, these guys who are on the street one day and the next day you know that they are millionaires. They are, you know, really wealthy people. They are the most influential people. Kings, presidents, prime ministers are consulting them. Uh, you've seen movies like that, right? You know, you've uh, read stories of people who, who would have to take up three-time job now giving out jobs to thousands and thousands of people, you know? Uh, in the same way, the, the, is the story of Ruth this morning. It is the story of this lady who is a foreigner, who is um, absolutely 
a, a, a reject of the society that she is currently living in, who is abso a, a, a nobody, absolute nobody. She has lost everything and, and overnight, overnight she becomes a, a, you know, you know, a person that, that people would look up to, that people would hear from she became a wealthy person she became a person through whom jesus would have to be born thousands of years later you know uh, ruth was the great grandmother of of jesus for those of you who didn't know so um, so the story of ruth is a story of going from rags to riches you know not just not just physical riches but but spiritual riches, uh, you know, relational riches, emotional riches, riches in every way. She was blessed and she was favored. And, you know, a few Sundays back, uh, Pastor Jeevan preached on the fact that this is the year of, this is the year of God's favor, not just, not just favor, not just favor with people. But this is the year of God's favor over your life. But you know what, the, the regular, you know, your, your, your success or your prosperity, you can earn it or you can work your way to it, okay? But, but God's favor doesn't, you can never earn it. You can, you, you, you can earn it, but you cannot buy it. You, you have to earn it by the way you live, you know? God's mercy is available for everybody. No, God's grace is available for everybody, but God's favor is limited. It's not given to anybody and everybody. God's favor is given to them that, that, that please his heart, that, 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 are, that are walking after him, that are pursuing after him. Amen. So this morning we are studying how this woman called Ruth, she got favored by God. Why did she get favored by God? What was this thing about Ruth? She was not even an Israelite. She, was, she did not even belong to the called, the promised, the, the loved people called Israel. She was a Moabite. She belonged to the uh, family of Lot. You know, and, and that, that comes from a you know, very bad bloodline. And, and she, uh, she is in the Bible, the, you know, the book of uh, Exodus, when God gave commandments to enter into God's presence, God said, till the 10th generation, if they come in, they cannot enter the house of God. That, that was the rule you know, in Israel that back then. She was a person who is not at all eligible to be favored by God. But what did she do that, that gave her such divine favor with God? And if we learn the same things, and if we do the same things, we will be favored the same way that she was favored. Amen? I mean, all of us over here expects favor, right? We all expect favor from God. But we, any, most times we keep it to our prayer request where we ask God to favor us that, and we, we don't work towards it. We don't, um, we don't do anything from our side to earn God's favor, you know. Uh, so so it's not, not just enough that you begin praying for your, uh, for your favor to come through. It's also necessary that you work towards it. You, you take practical steps to to work in working towards earning that favor that that God has in store for you amen so the first thing that Ruth had you know that and I'm gonna tell you five qualities that will set you up for divine favor that is the title of this morning's sermon five qualities in you you know in us that can be developed that we can that can, we can move to that can that that we can uh, embrace that we can cultivate in our lives so that we can be we can be in position to receive God's favor amen so the first quality about Ruth that prepared her to receive favor from God is the fact that she it's very simple it's the fact that she was simple you know Ruth was a very simple lady you know what does what her name means it means friend you know, 
when ali malik that is ruth's father in law they they moved to the to outside of israel outside of bethlehem both their children they got married to two ladies in that land the other son he married a, a lady called orpha you know and the name orpha means mane you know what a mane is have you seen a, a G- german shepherd or a, you know you have seen the lion you know you remember when we went to the zoo and we saw the lion you know uh, when the lion shakes they had the hair the majestic hair around the ra- lion's head that that is called mane and that is what that is the name of this other person you know uh, you know even even uh, if you've seen movies like uh, lord of the rings and you would see this uh, elves having that mane around you know a uh, mane like uh, uh, long flowy beard uh, looks very majestic on their faces you know uh, and and that's what mane is all about uh, the other wife the wife of the other brother she was very majestic you know her name was majestic you know probably she was the the hottest chick in town you know the she was probably uh, very desired by guys she um you know would would know to speak well she was very charismatic you know she was uh, very very attractive but the bible says ruth she was just just normal her name itself means friend that's it friend uh, a, a simple thing called friend you know it, it's um, nothing nothing extravagant about it nothing um nothing great about it just one simple lady she didn't have any characteristics that uh, we can um, point out and say wow you know that we would go wow about she's just a ordinary simple person you know what is the good thing about being a simple person it's that we it's easy to love it's easy to you know leave the old things it's easy to to give up on things that that needs to be given up given up and, and this is what the bible says ruth chapter 1 and verse 14 and again they they wept together this is talking about orpha and ruth again they wept together and orpha kissed her mother in law and said goodbye but ruth clung tightly to naomi in other words orpha though the beauty that she was though the maj- majestic creature that she was though the smart personality that she was she uh, you know made a lot of hangama she cried in front of everybody but at the end of the day she knew that she couldn't leave everything behind and walk after because she was she was known in that land you know probably she was uh, you know sought after in that land everybody was looking forward to get married to this girl because her husband is already you know dead uh, and and ruth she didn't she didn't struggle to give up the pleasures because she was a very simple lady she didn't she didn't she wasn't extremely attached to things she she wasn't extremely attached to the fame because she didn't have any fame she was just an ordinary friend you know nothing majestic about it she was a simple person and and guys girls can i can i inspire you to lead simple lives not simplistic lives you know simplistic is when we live without any meaning in life you know we live without any purpose we live without any aim i'm not asking you to live simplistic lives i'm asking you to live a simple life let let it be in the clothes you wear let it be in the you know in the way you speak let it be in the way you conduct yourself can you can you um uh maintain a culture can our church maintain a culture of of living a simple life amen i know this doesn't sound very exciting i would uh, you would be very excited if i say that hey guys come on we have to now start traveling on chartered flights and you know we have to um, own our own homes bungalows and i mean i'm i'm not saying that god wouldn't bless you with wealth but i'm saying you have to maintain or build a culture of living a simple life even when you are blessed with wealth dr paul yongicho you know it says he's the uh, he was uh, he is the pastor of the world's largest church you know recently 
his church got into trouble because the because his son uh, you know they they did some financial transactions which was illegal of about 3 billion dollars so, uh, you know I, I was talking about dr paul yongicho right this man he 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 is the pastor of the biggest church in the world okay he has money like if he half of his board members are billionaires certified billionaires half of his board members and the church has got like about 5000 millionaires you know you can imagine the church has got about 5000 millionaires when they have to uh, do a all night prayer meeting guess what they do they book the seoul olympic stadium you know when they have to do a combined service they have to book the airport you know they that day they have to shut down the airport and book the airport that's the number of people who come to the church this man he has wealth he i mean the, i mean he he has wealth at his at his hands you know in, in fact that is the reason the they they got into trouble his son was was not so uh, you know so in, uh, was not a man of integrity he asked his dad to sign some papers which was not uh, legal and his dad just he's like an 80 year old man he just closed his eyes and he just signed it off and because he did that he got into trouble he got arrested and right now he's out uh, but you know when when the story came out you know i read this article which said that this man he still lives in a like a, a small condo uh, or a two BHK apartment, something like uh, just with three rooms in 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 total. This man, he uh, he he wants to live close to the church, so he has this house built within the church, one one small house, and he still drives some, you know, something that his church member had gifted him. Very very simple life, in spite of the fact that he has access to wealth. Can can God trust us with wealth and, it's, and still hope that we would live simple lives? What happens when you get money? You want to show off that you have money, right? You would probably uh, put a you know, golden chain and, and you would put it out so people see that you know, I, I, I have uh, something that I didn't have all this while. You would uh, buy Ray-Ban uh, goggles and, you know, and come to church. Hey. Did you notice my goggles? You'd, you'd, uh, you know, probably buy an iPhone 5S, and you would come and, you know, click pictures, you know, just to, just so that somebody will ask you, hey, what iPhone is that? You know, I mean, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's wrong to indulge yourself. I, I'm, I'm asking you, can God trust you with wealth and hope that you would still live a simple life? You know, if if God gives you money, yes, go ahead, spend it. Spend, spend it on yourself as much as you give, but can you still maintain a, 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 a heart of simplicity? Can we all do that? Because if we, if we are ready to do that, God is going to bless us, not just in wealth, but in, in spirituality. God is going to bless us in every way. You know, that's the story of Ruth. She did not just become... Uh, the wife of the well, uh, such a wealthy and influential person, she got a man like Boaz. Man, he was a gem for any girl who is single. You should pray for a man like Boaz. This guy, he doesn't even know Ruth. Okay, he goes behind uh, Ruth and speaks to his, uh, you know, uh, the the workers in the fields and tells them, "Hey guys, intentionally please drop some food on the ground so she can pick it up." You know, uh, that's uh, that was the law in Israel that if you drop a a, le a a sheaf down, you cannot pick it up. That is for the for the widows, the poor, and the and the foreigners in the land. And Boaz went and told his. Um, uh, his, his workers, hey guys, when you are harvesting, intentionally please drop some for her, you know. This guy doesn't even know her well, but, but he, he had a kind heart. And, and that's what 
any girl in this place would want to get married to. That's the guy that anybody in this place would want to get married to. And, and God blessed her with, with, with a person like Boaz. God blessed her with wealth. God blessed her with, with the spiritual things. You know, she was a grandmother of King David. You know, she was the grandmother of Jesus. You know, can you imagine the, can you imagine the spiritual heritage, the, the physical heritage, the emotional um, wealth that God blessed her with because she was ready to live a simple life. Because she, was, because she said, hey, I'm just, a, I'm, 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 I'm just an ordinary person. I'm just a friend. You know, you, you, are you looking for a friend? You have it in me. Amen? Amen. And everybody said, I will be simple. Simple people love and cling easily, you know. That is, that is why it is, it is required that you be simple. That you be required, it's required that you be simple in your relationship and your walk with God. Point number two. Uh, let me rush now. I just have like 14 minutes. I have to preach four more points. Point number two is that she was loyal. She had developed a sense of loyalty towards Naomi. She had developed a sense of loyalty towards Naomi's family. She, ha- she was not legally bound to Naomi anymore. Now this girl, okay, it's talking about living with her mother-in-law. People, we, most folks that I personally know, though they love their mother-in-laws, they, they don't do things the same way their mother-in-laws do. You know, they have a separate style, separate way of uh, living their life. The only way you would uh, want to live with your mother-in-law is if your if your husband is there with you and and you know protecting you, guiding you, and saying uh, you know stopping your mom from uh, going crazy. Uh, and and this lady, her husband died, and and still she says no. This is the family that I belong to, and I will be loyal to this family. She. And Naomi, in her graciousness, she had released her, said, go back to your parents, go get married again. I don't have other sons that you can get married to. Go back to your parents. But Naomi said, no, 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 nothing doing. I am going to come with you. Where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. What you eat, will I also eat. Your people will be my people. Where you die, will I die. Where you worship, will I worship and your God will be my God. Amen. Amen. Loyalty is, is towards a person or an institution. You know, as Christians, we have loyalty in, in different levels. One is we need to be loyal to God. We need to be loyal to God. I, I can't overemphasize the importance of this. Guys, it's not enough that we come to church, but it's, it's essential that we be loyal to God. Joseph, when he was uh, faced with the temptation to sleep with Potiphar's wife, you know what he said? He didn't say, oh, how can I be disloyal to your, to your master? He said, how can I do this sin against my God? I cannot do this against my God because if I do this, I will be breaking my trust with my God. Not, with, not just with your husband. You know, so Joseph knew that his primary loyalty is towards God. So church, every time you sin, every time you consciously choose to disobey God and walk in the ways of sin. You know, unconsciously we all commit mistakes, right? The other day I said something and I realized, uh-oh, that was a lie. And we all, we, we have to come back and repent of it and, you know, go get it right. But consciously every time that you, you say no to God and you walk in the ways of sin, you are being disloyal to God. Because Jesus, he has purchased us with his blood. He has purchased us with his blood so that, so that we, can, we can prove our allegiance to him. You know who is the other master? It is Satan. It is sin. It is the things of the world. He who loves the world cannot love God. He who walks and works for the world cannot walk and work for God. Your loyalty to God is proved in your lifestyle. Your loyalty to God is proved in the way that, that you conduct yourself, in the way that you speak, the way that you, you, you think, not just the way that you speak externally, the way, the way that you speak in your mind. You know, externally you might be saying, Clinton, 
<laughs> you are a awesome guy and internally you will be like huh? clinton i know what you did i mean you you would not necessarily say it out but you know even even what you think in your mind it, your loyalty to god is affected why because god knows your thoughts god knows your thoughts church can we be a church which is loyal to god can we be a church because if we are loyal to god everything else will be all right we will be automatically loyal to a husband or wife we will be automatically loyal to our companies we will be automatically loyal to our churches we will be automatically loyal to anything that god has has placed around us the reason joseph w- was in the danger of breaking his loyalty with his master was because he was about to break his loyalty to god the reason many a times we break our trust with other people is because we have first broken our trust with god and and guys when you're loyal to god when you're loyal to god you know i how would you treat this one man okay john you you have a company now right what is it called kachi kachi clothing kachi clothing right yeah he has a company it's called kachi clothing now suppose i join his company and i serve him loyally he doesn't pay me anything i just work for him i call everybody and tell him hey guys you know you have to bless uh, kachi and you have to buy his clothes and you have to do things to uh, you know bless this man and I, and i work for him i i do everything for him what would he do what would he do he would at the end of the day he would he would favor me you know he would come and give me free t-shirts won't you john of course you better <laughs> he would he would come and give me you know he would show favor on me you know i know you know our church website is so uh, hosted on this domain called bethelwebhost.com and these guys i i have i have introduced a lot of people to bethel web host and who began to take his service use his services and because of that when i wanted to host our church podcast he said dude i'm not going to charge anything he he is he is given me four times of what i'm paying for the the speed the the bandwidth the memory four times of what i'm paying for at absolute free of course last year he increased double and this year just the last week he increased four times so that we can do as much as podcast as we want and all because i was loyal to him i i brought him customers and and can you imagine if this is how a human being can treat you you know human beings they are partial they have their fund us wrong you know you know how 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 much favor will come your way when you are loyal to god man man you you think that if you say uh, if you don't pay a bribe you will miss that that opportunity you think that if you don't do that thing you would just miss a life of lifetime of an opportunity guess what if god favors you man every closed door has to open up before god every every closed door has to open up before god when god says yes let me open this door for my son or for my daughter amen and and that is what ruth did she was she was loyal to her family she was loyal to the god of naomi and everybody said an amen Come on, repeat it after me. I'll be simple, and I'll be loyal. Point three is commitment. Ruth was committed. Now, can I give you the difference between commitment and loyalty? Loyalty is towards a person or an institution or an organization or a country or. commitment is to a cause or an activity or or, or something that we do you know a commitment is not towards a person loyalty or allegiance is towards a person but commitment is towards the uh, an activity a, a, a chore in life for example ruth chapter 2 and verse 2 the bible says one day ruth the moabite said to naomi let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left let me bring food into the house now now me never told ruth ruth 
now that you're in Bethlehem, please wake up and go bring food into the house. Now Ruth said, hey, 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 I am loyal to you, so I will be committed to the cause. I will be committed to the cause of feeding you. I will be committed to the, the cause that, 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 that binds us together. I will be committed to it. And the one thing that Christians often lack is commitment. You know, the other day I was discussing with Pastor Jeev and I said, uh, you know, what is your feedback of our church? And, and the first thing that he said is, you know what, our church lacks commitment. Our church lacks committed people in the church. And I was... For a moment, I, I was, you know, I was preparing to defend. I said, no, I don't think so, uh, you know. And then he said, see, most folks, they don't even come regularly to church. They don't even come for all the meetings. They don't, uh, they, they, are not, they are not ready to, you know, come regularly. And I said, yes, that's, that's what commitment is. Commitment is to an activity, a cause you know that we all do together commitment is towards the the work that we do together and i can i can i i i enjoy doing this i uh, you know i have if at any point i don't know what i what i should give an example for i pull up my wife and i have such a brilliant example so this morning while i was taking bath i called her up i said can i can i uh, can i embarrass you in church she said yes go ahead and so <laughs> You know, I, I remember asking her the other day, you know, everybody were making a plan to, to wake up at four in the morning and, and go to Nandi Hills. So I, I, before, even without asking her, I told them, hey, Rashmi and Zahal cannot come. Four in the morning is too early for her to wake up. And uh, I, tell, I tell her, hey, you might, you might not be able to come, right? She's like, how dare you do that? I have to come. Four in the morning doesn't matter. I'm going to be there. And the same lady finds it difficult to wake up at 8 in the morning for prayer, uh, uh, revival prayers. And, you know, you, do, you, do, you see the, do you see the difference of commitment? Now, you know, so, so I opened up a dialogue with her. I asked her, why is it? What happens in your mind? Why is it that you are open to going for a picnic but not for church? And he, she, she told me this. She said, the reason is because you are the pastor and I'm not. You know, because... She asked me this question. She said, if you weren't the pastor of the church, would you still go for the worship practice in time? Would you still go for the uh, Monday morning prayers? Would you still go for all the house churches? She asked me this. And, and that, that just gave me a revelation of why we lack in commitment. It's because we lack in responsibility. Can we all function in this church as, as though we are the pastor of the church? John is the pastor of this church. So what would he do? He would, he would do everything to make sure that, you know, the church runs smooth. You know, Emos is the pastor of this church. So he would, if, if each and every one of us take up responsibility, then our commitment to the cause of Christ. What are we doing here in church? We are not here to make money, are we? We are not here to build a big church. What are we here for? We are here for the sake of Christ and and we all would take up the responsibility saying hey 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 Priji is not the only pastor I know uh, he might feel bad about it but he's not the only pastor I am also a pastor in the church and I will also do it and I will also want to uh, encourage people I will also go and pray for people I will also bring new people to church if every one of us you know take up a responsibility and uh, take up the responsibility and say God I, I want to be committed you know, in your, your commitment to God is proved in the way your commitment you, is towards His body, the church. If you are not committed to His body, the church, how can you be committed to God? How can you be committed to His cause? His cause is proved. We, we, that's what we're doing out here, right? So, so can, I, can I encourage you, church, that we have to be committed here? You know, one reason why, why I'm emphasizing on commitment is because... Uh, for example, Naveen is new here this morning, you know. Uh, we, we, people like Ben, Ben has been coming only for two weeks. How would they come regularly to church if us, if we are not coming regularly to church? We are setting up a bad example for them. We are telling them, hey, going to church every Sunday is not necessary. Going for all the prayer meetings is not necessary. Going, you know, I mean, they would, they would take our example and and they would imitate us 
And that is why I'm emphasizing that we have to be committed. You know, all the African brothers, awesome, you guys are doing an awesome job. But can I encourage you to, to come to church on time? Wake up early. On Sunday mornings, wake up early. Not because, not because you love me, but because you love the God that we serve here in church. Amen? Everybody, can we, can we do that? We wake up early on Sunday mornings, that we, we sleep in time on Saturday nights. No watching movies on Saturday nights because we have to sleep in time and wake up early in the morning so that we can be in church at sharp 10 o'clock. So that half an hour we get to worship, half an hour we get to pray. And you come and ask Pastor Jeevan, Pastor, where are we evangelizing this week? Can I prepare myself? I, I also want to evangelize. I know you are the pastor of the church, but I also want to evangelize. I, you come and take up responsibility. And when you grow in your commitment to the body of Christ, God would, God would favor you. God would favor you. If, if Ruth had to sit in her home for Naomi to come and tell her, okay, Naomi, I think, uh, okay, Ruth, you know, I don't think we have food in the house. We need to do something. And uh, if, if Ruth would have waited for that, she would have missed the opportunity of a lifetime. She would have missed meeting Boaz. She would have missed the, the, the whole blessing that came her way. The reason it didn't come. The, the Bible says, Boaz asked her fieldmen, you know, well, what is this lady doing? And, and the guy said, she has not rested except for a few minutes in the afternoon. The entire day, she's been working hard in the field. And, and Boaz's heart went out when he saw the commitment that this lady had for the cause. His heart just went out. He said, oh my God, that, that is... That is so cool. This girl is doing all these things to feed her mother-in-law. She is doing all these things to feed Naomi. Man, I, I have to honor this girl. I have to favor this girl. And that is exactly how the favor of God falls on you. When you, you honor God through your commitment. You honor God not just through your loyalty. Your loyalty will lead to your commitment. If you are not loyal, you cannot be committed. Most reason, most, most times, the reason many of us lack in commitment is because we lack in loyalty. You know, if we are loyal, it will automatically lead to commitment, where we are committed to his cause, where, where we, you know, and the reason many times we lack in commitment is because we lack in responsibility. We have to take up the responsibility on ourselves and say, you know what, I'm not going to sit around, I'm, I have to get out there and become, become the person that God has called me to be. And, and you have to be aggressive. You cannot, you cannot just come and try, give it a try and say, uh, no, 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 it's not working, you know, I have to move out, I have to do something else. No, if, if you have to be aggressive. Ruth took the risk of being in the Bible says Boaz very specifically went and told the men don't harm her because she is a foreigner she can get mistreated by the young men of the place and and she took the risk and she went to, ventured into a field where she doesn't know anybody she took the risk and she went and and she was committed to her cause and because of that God honored us. So many a times your commitment to God can, can come uh, uh, you might have to take some risk. You might have to take some uh, challenges. Go through some challenges. It's okay. Face them. Face your fears so that you can be committed to the cause of Christ. And everybody said amen. amen. I am simple. I am loyal. And I am committed. Amen. Can I just rush to the next two points the third the fourth point is the fact that Ruth was obedient guess what Naomi tells her the next day Naomi says get out at 8 in the evening go to Boaz's house go you know there will be watchmen okay this guy is a wealthy guy okay so there will be watchmen there will be folks waiting everywhere and you know sneak through the gate go into the house and go and lay down at his feet. Man, if, if, if Naomi was to tell me that, I would say, go do that yourself. I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. But because, because the commandment came from Naomi, she obeyed it. She didn't even question what 
to do she didn't even uh, she didn't even ask what if she didn't even ask but uh, you know all the times we say yes to god is with a but and with a what if with a with a still you know this 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 but i will not do that what if this happens like this what if i don't have food to eat what if that no 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 ruth Naomi said, "Go and do this." And 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 it's I think I think verse three, verse five. Ruth says, "I will do everything you say as it is. I will just obey." You know, obedience is a a, a thing that many a times Christians lack. Obedience to your elders, leaders, to your to the to the to the scriptures in God's word. If if we can. grow in obedience the bible says obey your parents in the lord and you will live long in the land here in church your parents are are your elders your your pre, the, the pastors they they are your spiritual parents here in church when you are committed here in this church and and when you obey us i'm not saying that you know if i say uh, that i should have the authority to command or 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 you know dictate your life but when you live in obedience it brings in eternal fruit the bible says obey your parents in the not outside the lord the lord is asking you to do this and your parents or your pastor or your leader is asking you to do something else you prefer obeying the lord than your parents but when you, the, when the commandment is within what god has spoken to you or what god is one thing you to do and you disobey it you know it 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 takes away the favor of god so can i can i ask you church can we grow in obedience not just to our, our elders and pastors here in church but also to to god to his word to his commandments in the scripture go through every scripture the other day i i got into a big fight with my neighbor and you know i i almost got a police complaint registered against me it was really bad uh, and you know i know don't worry it was not you know, i i didn't do anything unlawful this guy came to touch my wife and i just pushed him away and and he he thought he can just uh, he can file a police complaint and the police will come and catch me the police didn't do anything but but al- almost this thing happened and and I, i i started justifying in my head i said we rashmi and i we were talking and we we realized that we didn't do anything wrong it's completely justifiable what i did was completely right and then we prayed and we slept and and then the next morning god's word came from romans i think is it 16 it says live as much as possible live at peace with everyone live at pursue to live in harmony with everyone and i said god i'm not obeying that i might be justified in what i'm doing but this guy is my neighbor and i'm not living at peace with him and and i said oh god what what can i do now and i am so embarrassed to admit to him that i i was wrong and i was not wrong trust me i was not wrong i i'm so embarrassed i have to go and tell him i'm sorry rashmi said nothing doing you're not going <laughs> you know <laughs> the guy will take uh, you know more advantage he 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 doesn't understand what he is doing he will only take more advantage he will sit on your head after this and i said okay god all this risk but i have to obey your word you know i said god even if it means that i will be humiliated i will go and i and i went and i told him sorry and he was like taken aback first and he then he i think i he, the police didn't follow which means that he he must have withdrawn the complaint but uh, you know the way the way the whole thing happened i i was like okay what wh- what what is more important my my image before this guy or obedience to god's word what is more important of course obedience to god's word i don't care if this guy thinks i'm a dumb guy i don't care if guy this this guy thinks i'm a darfuk because i'm not trust me rush me saw that side of me that night when you know the the old gunda side of me where this man is 3 4 times my size and and i just pounced on him like you know like none of you want to see that uh, i i i can be really violent and 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 i know that it's not because i was scared of this guy it's because i have to be obedient to god's word i have to be obedient to god than keeping my face before people amen, amen. so can we grow in obedience 
And when we grow in obedience, we will grow in favor. And everybody said an amen. amen. I am simple. I am loyal. I am committed. And I am obedient. And the fifth one, Ruth 2.10. The Bible says, Ruth fell at his feet and, and thanked him warmly. Ruth was a grateful person. One thing that Christians don't know how to do properly is thankfulness. They, they just don't know how to be thankful. Not, not to God, nor to people. You know, in, especially here in, in, in Indian culture, in the West, uh, if, you, if a person pulls the chair for you, you the, the other person, doesn't matter how much of a crook he is, he'll still say thank you. If a person opens a door for you, doesn't matter even if it is the hundredth time the person is doing for you, the person will respond with saying a thank you. Guys, can we, can we develop, can we mature in our, in, in our character in church? Can we develop our quality of being thankful? God expects us to be thankful, not just to Him. Not just to Him. But when somebody does a good deed to us, make sure that that you are thankful to that person, that you, are, that you are grateful to that person. Because when you grow in thankfulness, you know what you do when you say, I am thankful? You say, hey, I did not deserve this. Thank you for going out of your way and doing it for me. And when you say that, you are also becoming humble in your heart. You are accepting your humility. You are you're being humble. A thankful heart is a humble heart. And the more you grow in thankfulness, the more will you grow in humility. The day you say that all that I have and all that I own is my own. You know, this, I have not taken anybody's favor. I have not uh, taken help from anybody. I don't have to be thankful to anybody. And you grow in that arrogance. That is the day when you grow in pride. But the day you say, I don't deserve this. I have to, I have to be thankful. I have to be grateful when you say that what you what you automatically do is that you grow in humility amen so i will be thankful amen, amen. can we can we say that again i will be simple i will be loyal i will be obedient i will be committed and i will be thankful Amen? Five qualities. If you would walk in these five qualities this next six days, this next six days, what day is it today? Sunday, Sunday right? After six days, what day would it be? Again Sunday, right? Now, if, if you would walk in these five qualities the next six days, trust me, when you come to church on Sunday, you would have a testimony of God's favor over your life. Amen. Amen. If you would develop, if, because for Ruth, it didn't take a long time. When she walked in, in simplicity, when she walked in loyalty, when she walked in, uh, in commitment, when she walked in obedience, when she walked in thankfulness, you know, God favored her overnight. So it won't take a long time for God to show his favor over your life. But you have to be loyal to him. You have to be committed to his cause. You have to decide to be simple. You have to decide that I'm going to obey God's word and, his, and, and, and the spiritual parents that are placed over my life. I'm going to be uh, you know, thankful. I'm going to be grateful. I'm not take my blessings for granted. When you do that, God is going to show his favor upon your life. And Ruth was not just blessed financially. She was blessed emotionally. She got a husband like Boaz and she was blessed spiritually. She was a grandmother of a great worship leader like, like David. She was a grandmother of Jesus. Her name made it to the New Testament in Jesus' genealogy. Amen. And, and that's what, what it does. Never do they mention a woman's name in a genealogy. Have you read the genealogy in the New Testament? It would all be about men. But you would see Ruth's name mentioned very specifically that this guy was the son of Ruth. And that is the spiritual heritage that God would bless you and your generations with when you have 
favor with God. When you have favor with God. And everybody said an amen.